everyone has a story to tell. Hello, my name is Aman Fee and you're watching Fridays are all the day at house. Another exciting day and we are in conversation with a well-known children's author. This band or based author has written over 25 books ranging from picture books to chapter books and fiction to non-fiction. On these as varied as science fiction, popular science, math, history, economics, Indian philosophy, life skills and most recently medicine. Let's find out. Her best known work includes eight part tournaments, India's first fantasy adventure series for children in England. Eat Up for Children, listed by Amazon as one of 100 Indian books to read in a lifetime. Its prequel, The Vedas and Upanishad, for children. She has also co authored Fitness, Evangelist, and Supermodel, Villain. Dohan's memoir, Made in India. Yes, you have guessed it, and she is none other than Rupa Pai. Please give it up for her. Welcome, ma'am. Hello there. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Aman Preet, for inviting me. Really happy to be um, here on Friday's author days of the House and Books and Tales. Uh, House of Books and Tales. Um, thank you. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's start the interview. Excited to be answering your questions. Firstly, we'd like to know uh, any story from your childhood you have for us, any interesting anecdotes. What were you like uh, as a child? Hmm. I was quite a good girl, I mean, in the sense so none of these, like, you know, um, rascal type of stories because I, I was not mischievous. I was uh, very good and studied well and favorite of my teacher so I must have been a pain to other kids I'm sure because I was always this model student uh, but I, I mean funny incidents means I can talk about how I was such a bookworm such a bookworm once I finished all my books and that was very quick you know you can't linger over your own books you finish them very fast if you're a bookworm and your parents can't keep getting you books although we had this uh, little second-hand kind of bookstore in Bangalore where we used to, my mom used to take us and we used to exchange our books for others. There was a book swap kind of thing. Although that would hurt so much to have to give up your books to get other books. So in that case, the library was a saving grace. We had libraries. Uh, but, but, you know, when I used to, when I had to visit family, uh, perhaps in other towns and they didn't have that many books. In fact, my first, whenever I used to go to somebody else's house and we all had to be quiet after saying hello auntie, hello uncle, we were sent away with the other kids to the room to, to make ourselves scarce. And my first way of judging somebody uh, was to ask the child in the house, my contemporary, like, do you have any Enid Blyton? And if they said yes, then okay, they were part of my tribe and I was totally expansive towards them and you know, I would be friends with them. And if they said no, I would judge them so harshly and put them away in some, you know, forgotten, like absolutely way down on my social hierarchy because they did not have any blight. But among my cousins sometimes who lived in smaller towns, they did not have English books. Perhaps as, as it is access to English books was, no, it was limited. Uh, when I was growing up and uh, they didn't have so many so what did I used to do how to spend my time if I'm there for a weekend or something that would be I would take my own books but then I'd be done with them and then I'd look around the whole house for books they wouldn't have any but one thing that every South Indian home at least had was a dictionary was an English dictionary so I was known among my cousins as the girl who would be found in some corner somewhere far away from everybody else with her nose buried in a dictionary because I, that need to read was so strong that I would even read dictionaries. Actually, they are very, very entertaining and very, very compelling books to read, I must say. Even now, if you give me a dictionary, I'll happily lose myself for two hours in a dictionary. Especially looking at the etymology of words, where they originated from, I, I find it fascinating, actually. So that is one incident and I must say, please don't try this at home or in your school when you go back to real school. But I used to always lie about having a stomach ache or headache or something when the PT period used to, PT was physical training, but now they call it PE, PE I think physical education. And I would uh, always have a book in my bag and I'd you know, slack off from that saying something. And I would sit either in a corner of the playground or in the classroom reading my book. 
you know when everybody else went to the playing field and now i feel really stupid about it because i think i should have gone out and played i would have learned a lot of lessons on the playing field as well but no i was just lost in my books so that that was me as a child a little readers can uh, uh, will relate to this uh, if you had to give yourself a book title a title mm-hmm. uh, what would hmm actually i think i'll just pick a line from one of my favorite books as a teenager uh, it was called gone with the wind uh, it was by margaret mitchell and the hero in the main the heroine of the book you know this very fat book is one of the fattest i had read i think i was 13 or some 14 when i read it and uh, her name was scarlet o'hara and she keeps saying her guiding philosophy in life is tomorrow is another day and i think that will be uh, that would have been my um, the title if i was a book that would be my title because i truly believe in particularly now after doing all that Uh, research and study of the ancient indian scriptures you know to write the gita for ch- children and the vedas and upanishads for children i found that that is really to live in the present till it's tomorrow and then leave the present behind or leave the past behind and move on so i think my guiding principle is to look at each day as a new life beginning every day in every way you're getting better and better and also today is the first day of the rest of your life so don't let the regrets and uh, sadnesses and sorrows of the past uh, hold you down at all tomorrow is another day and whenever you sleep it's like the world ends you know it's like death and so when you open your eyes again to a fresh day it's full of infinite possibility so you know if you can have that in your mind you will never be sad because you're saying tomorrow is another day there's another chance another chance to be a better person than i was today another chance to Uh, do what i didn't today so tomorrow is another day so i think that would be my title that's a beautiful way to look at life thank you <laughs> so what was your favorite yeah. book as a child mm i had so many favorite books so i don't think i can pick one but i could say that all of enid blyton you know she was very obligingly wrote over 700 books so and and all our childhood libraries then the neighborhood libraries that used to flourish when we were young they all stocked many many dozens of her books so if you were a member of three or four libraries then between them and you would have a selection of at least 150 different titles of enid blyton and uh, yeah i think those books were my favorite and because she did not write in a particular genre she wrote school stories she wrote circus stories she wrote fantasy stories she wrote adventure stories um uh, and a lot of you know um uh, and each of them had a kind of some kind of moral but which was delivered in a very non preachy way just by the by so i think she was responsible for many things in my childhood she was responsible for showing me how to be a good person without actually saying it in so many words she of course was responsible for keeping me completely entertained for years and years and she was responsible for teaching me how to write a good cracking story for children uh, that would keep them engaged so enid blyton high up on the list and second all the amartya kathas not second in in the kind of hierarchy but the other parallelly the other thing that absorbed me the other kind of genre of books that absorbed me were amartya katha comics like many reading kids most i think all reading indian kids of my generation i was obsessed with amartya katha so much so that i remember entire panels like you know pages and pages of books in my head uh, so if you tell me harsha uh, king harsha vardhana then i know the cover i know it if it says sons of rama i know it rama krishna like all the covers are <laughs> right in my head so we all used to be obsessed with them so that was the other one in my childhood so two completely different kinds of books uh but i think the kinds of books i write today are definitely an amalgam of both uh yeah so they have really shaped my writing and me as a person both any favorite character from the books i think if i then i have to take uh, a different book none of mm-hmm. neither of these when i grew up all all characters in these books were my favorite but when i grew up a little bit then i think i came across this fabulous which if you say one book that really changed my life or was some turning point it was harper lee's to kill a mockingbird 
uh, which and I think favorite character among many many favorite characters was Atticus Finch, the father of the two children, uh, the father of the girl who narrates the story, Scout. Yeah, so he was right up there as a favorite character. <laughs> right. This is uh, these were your childhood bo- books and memories. How how do you choose? Uh, what inspired you to write? You know? mm, yeah, I. You know, you know, I'm often asked this question, and I don't know what the answer is. It seemed to be a very natural urge that came from deep within, and I can't even put a date on it or anything. It was from when I was very little. Words are my thing. And uh, so I had to find, if I had to express myself, it had to be through words, not so much through speaking. I was quite quite a quiet child because I used to read a lot. So I poured myself out in words, in writing. So I think I, and that seems for me the most natural way, not only, not like a career, but just the natural way to live, to always pour stuff out onto paper. Uh, although I must say I never kept a diary or anything formal like that it was just whenever something moved me or something I would write a piece about it I would write a little story about it or something so I think what, just for that I consider myself as a very very blessed and very lucky person because I knew from when I was very little there was no dilemma at all I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I grew up I wanted to write what I would write that would that was different but I would definitely be writing something I could be writing advertising copy or could be writing for a newspaper or I could be writing for a magazine or I could be writing books like it didn't matter but I, I knew poetry interviews whatever but I would have to write so yeah I think that's how it happened even today you know my kids always laugh when they listen to music their kinds of music or whatever I am if I don't and if I don't hear the words if I don't know what the words are the music is always secondary. I want to know what are the words and if the lyrics move me, then the song moves me. So I'm a very word person. That's my first point of contact with the world and the way I engage with the world is words. I'm curious to know which is your favorite song as in if if we have one, me. Mm, I don't know. The Beatles, everything they wrote, uh, just their vibe, just who they were. Like I was nuts about the Beatles. so growing up so I love all what they write I love Bob Dylan's lyrics uh, and um, I think current of the current not even they're not even current anymore but uh, I love Owl City their lyrics uh, I mean there's a lot of auto tune in it so musically I don't know how good they are but uh, their lyrics are his lyrics are so beautiful so yeah it's always Cheryl Crow's lyrics there are people who musicians who move me yeah um, coming back to your writing, how do you choose your the subjects of the books? So I've um, written on a very wide variety of topics and I've written fiction and non-fiction. I've written for very young children and for teenagers. So I'll just take you through some of my books so that you get your readers and you get an idea of the kind of books I've written. So this is the first thing I wrote. It was called Tara Knots. It's an eight part fantasy adventure series for children. And it was India's first uh, series for children in English of this sort. Uh, so that, there's that fantasy adventure. Then I have written books uh, on history, like Krishna Devaraya, one of my who, who ruled from Vijayanagar, uh, from his capital Hampi, which happens to be one of my favorite places in the world. And uh, then uh, there's a book I've written on economics uh, because I didn't know anything about it, so I decided to write a book about it. You know, educate myself along the way and uh, then there's a book for teenagers and almost teenagers on life skills called ready 99 must-have skills for the world conquering teenager and almost teenager this is inspired by the scouts and guides movement and uh, then there are for younger kids uh, these were written long ago so I'm not sure how many people even remember this or know of it these are the sister sister series on explaining scientific concepts but with fun uh, in a fun way so there are beautiful illustrations and uh, you know very highly lush picture books uh, so these are the other two and uh, so there and then quite recently this book called uh, from leeches to slug glue 25 explosive ideas that made and are making modern medicine 
uh, which is a, I mean you will see a lot of science in my writing because I have a background in science I'm an engineer but this book particularly was really scary in the sense that I wrote it uh, in September 27 2019 it came out and you know we had, I thought we had conquered everything medicine was at its highest level and then three months later came came the pandemic <laughs> so yeah so it has but but it, it's a lovely book I mean I just want to tell children if they want to know about when the first vaccine the process of making a vaccine uh you know the the, the journey that medicine has had through 2500 years it will give them a lot of hope during the pandemic to read it because you feel that we have conquered this we are not the first ones we are not particularly disadvantaged in fact you know we have the uh, wifi and netflix and we are able to attend classes so we are actually very privileged to have had this pandemic in the 21st century uh and how it how it might have been very very different if it had happened just 100 years ago it would have been a very very different story so things like that and um, let's see and now i mean i also written this book for adults actually called i mean it's a memoir about milan soman who was a fitness activist and uh, used to be a supermodel yeah so i have written on a variety and of course there's the gita for children and the vedas and upanishads for children which is on indian philosophy so there's a yeah the subjects are very uh diverse and i choose my subjects based on what i what i'm interested in at that moment or uh, what i feel like pursuing for instance a medicine book i wrote because i've always had an interest in medicine because i have my sister is a doctor older sister and so i was much younger i used to read her text like i told you crazy reader so even her fat medical textbooks i would try and read because so i was fascinated by i've been always been fascinated by biology and medical subjects although i became an engineer because i didn't want to have to deal with cutting up bodies or anything so uh, that was a different thing and economics i wrote because like i said i didn't know anything about it so so it, it just what catches my fancy and i'm i'm also curious about a great many things and a great many subjects and i feel that if you approach any subject even what is considered the most boring in the world or the most difficult in the world with an open mind and heart and say like teach me that subject will begin to speak to you and uh, and i feel that as long as you retain that curiosity that children naturally have and adults lose as they grow up the world is endlessly fascinating you will never be bored and that's why i i hesitate to write in the same genre more than once uh i try to pick up different topics although i must say that this indian philosophy thing has got me hooked so i might write a few more in that genre but always punctuated by books about other things to keep it exciting for myself yeah, we've heard in so many ted you know ted talks and the talks you take but about simplifying gita so beautifully yeah. for kids would yeah. you like to share something about that yeah so how did like- it come up how did gita the book uh it came up from a suggestion from my editor at hashet india uh, vatsala kol banerji she was far more convinced than i would ever be that i was the right person to do this for kids and i was so shocked when she suggested it because i had never actually engaged with the bhagavad gita as a child or growing up or anything so i was like no no please it's supposed i mean i had not even thought of engaging with indian philosophy it was too scary and uh it felt too intimidating but she somehow felt that i i did have a great interest in indian mythology that's for sure but philosophy is a completely different kettle of fish but she somehow was convinced that if anyone could do this uh it would be me and she pursued me relentlessly and finally she i, I said okay fine i'm just going to sit i'm actually going to borrow a copy of the gita because i did not even have one at home uh from somebody else and perhaps sit with someone and learn a little bit try it and then i'll tell you if I, first of all i was convinced that it was definitely not for children uh and secondly i was convinced that it was far too difficult for me to try and even get somewhat of a grip on in a year of research or whatever i thought it would take years and years and it was not practical uh and i was also afraid that it would be somehow patriarchal or casteist or sexist or and i said i don't want to i don't want to talk, to talk about those kinds of texts for children i don't want to you know be the one doing it if they are if they don't need to be talked about let's not talk about them kind of thing but once again when you when i finally challenged myself and said okay let me just give it a good an honest chance 
and allow them and get into the book without any prejudices because i didn't know anything about how can i have prejudices so let's go and read it i mean it really blew my mind uh, i just felt that it was such an important book and i felt bad that i hadn't read it and i was determined that children should read it because there's it's it's a kind of very secular um, oldest self help book in the world it's a self help book it tells you how to live a joyous life and uh, without worry and without regret and without anxiety and i felt children particularly now and teenagers who who are always so anxious about so many things would benefit greatly from reading it so yeah that's how the geeta happened and uh, yeah i mean i just lost myself in the book it's very beautiful the original text i mean <laughs> we want to know other than uh, writing and reading what is the other uh, the, the activity which you enjoy the most mm yeah reading writing main things uh i like pottering around my house i like uh, you know doing up my house a little bit i like um watching films i i really do I, but i keep saying that i enjoy watching films but i don't watch that many but whenever i do whenever i find the time somehow it's been burnt into my brain that watching films or television is somehow a waste of time activity while reading is a very worthwhile activity it just is not true because i mean reading is just as worthwhile as watching a good film they're just different forms of storytelling and whichever works for you that's fine but in my head there is a lot of sort of mental block that especially in the middle of the day if you're watching television or watching netflix my god don't we have anything better to do with that's more productive and more worthwhile kind of there's always this voice in my head but if i could tell that voice to be quiet i would watch a lot more films i really enjoy watching films um what else do I, and for me like i think my most favorite activity is to sit in in fact at this year that's why there are no upcoming books because i decided i had decided well before covid struck that this year would be my sabbatical year that i would not write and i would do other things that would rejuvenate my creative side in other ways and just take some time for myself and i had planned that this whole year i would be sitting doing my favorite activity which is like sitting in different cafes the cup of chai and a book and then all the cafes closed <laughs> and we were not supposed to go but yeah so that is that and traveling and yeah i have a lot of i really enjoy traveling a lot road trips yeah any any five top places in your wish list uh so there are uh, you know there are people who like to go to new places all the time and i am one of those people who actually likes to revisit uh places old favorites because then there's no tension of sightseeing we have to everything has been seen so this time every this time when you go you can just soak it in allow it to do exactly just what you want to do and just let the atmosphere you know soak in so in that sense hampi is uh, one of my favorite places and i'm hoping to go back there soon i try and go every year so that is always that's a that's a permanent thing on my travel wish list as a destination i uh, love london i i mean i i've lived there for a while but i just really love the the energy of the place the vibe so london is always again on my top favorite destinations list anytime anybody says come to london which nobody does but if they did i would just stop on a plane and go there and uh, i do want to spend a lot more time in the coming years in the himalayas if i can uh i have never done a proper himalayan trek except when i was you know in my 20s and i want to go back and be in the mountains for a lot more there are people who love the sea and there are people who love the mountains my entire family loves the sea i love the mountains so you know <laughs> i want to do that a lot more uh well i would love to go to israel that is has been on my list for a long time i do want to go to jerusalem and bethlehem and uh somehow because i went to a missionary school growing up i have a great uh, love for and fascination with jesus christ so i would really like to go to the places he is believed to have walked the earth so yeah these are places i would like to go to and i just they want to spend a lot of time traveling around india because india is just endlessly fascinating you can never finish seeing everything there is um so yeah always much much prefer to travel in india than abroad if books are your best friend what is library to you 
a library is a sanctuary a haven like the a place where i can truly be myself when nobody even looks at you as weird if you have your nose in a book it's what everyone who comes to a library does that's what they're there for uh it's it's my spirit animal a library is my spirit animal <laughs> you know if i could be anything else i would be a library if i need if i didn't have to be a person i would be a thing then i would be a library with lots of books so yeah that's what it means to me and uh, yeah i'm so happy that I, that's why i'm happier that i'm talking to you because you've run such a lovely library uh, house of books and tales and i believe you also have a lovely activity center and you do many things to engage kids and all the different faculties not only the reading faculty because it's true that all not that not all children are readers but there is there's no need for any hierarchy about that that readers are not somehow better than other kinds of uh, kids i mean so i'm happy that you do art and you offer all that music uh, all those things are important to make a person whole i think and um, yeah i believe you also have books to sell yeah so that that's very nice so yeah if anybody wants to pick up copies of my books please go to house of books and tales and amun preet will help you So thanks so much this was such a great pleasure thank you Aman Preet for having me and uh, yeah thanks kids and whoever is listening in thank you bye bye thank you so much for joining in and sharing these little details about you and your journey as an author we have greatly enjoyed and i'm sure our listeners will also uh, get to know you better yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you thank you bye bye